What is going on guys and welcome back to week 7, the final regular league player week in the CCC. This time you've got your boy versus Josh and the Jubilee Life City Jirachis. We're both gunning for a buy, either win, we'll both get a buy. I'm not, com I'm not commentating obviously because I'm playing. Nick and Jack have taken this. I want to say by hands down this is the best game I have ever played in Draft League and I think Josh has said the same. So let's get right in, you're going to enjoy it so so much. So looking like a little bit of the rain team going on there, but not uh, some heavy of the full stuff. Yeah. Oh, actually, Matt. yeah, you're right. It could be heavy trick room. You're right. Yeah. There's no Kingdra with the swift swim. Uh, there's no Jolteon, and there's no Lycan Rock. So that's all yeah. Josh's ones. So with your Jake, you've got to be expecting that first room trick, uh, first turn trick room. Just who does he go with? Does he go with the Magurna trick room? Does he go with the P2 trick room? I mean, it's. <laughs> Both options are great, but looking down at Jake's list, you can see obviously the Loki, the uh, Arceus, the Slowbro, that's going to be key, I think, for this trick room. Clefty, yeah. Rillaboom, and the Sneasel. Sneasel's kind of good because you're probably running Fake Out on it, right? So you can maybe stop that trick room on turn one. Yeah. I also like the uh, Slowbro for taking advantage of the rain as well, because if he wants to, if Josh wants to nullify the Arcanine, he's going to have to bring the rain. Yeah. And Slowbro is going to uh, really enjoy that. Yeah, I think we might be seeing Slowbro MVP from Jake's side, but oh, I'm sure Josh will be expecting wow. it. Wow. <laughs> Which yeah, one do you go for? I mean, yeah, this is it, right? Both of them have the ability to set it. If you're Jake, what do you even do here? You lay some damage out. I think that's probably the best option, yeah. Intimidate not going to matter. But Jake in a hot spot here because he's got the uh, priority on the keys. And yeah. I know exactly what he's going to go for here. So, sunny day, laying down Ooh. some... Uh, some hardcore power into that Magurna, I guess. As long as we don't see a protect from Josh, this is going to hurt. It's going to hurt a lot, but... But Magurna never protects. mind. <laughs> yeah. Josh reads it. This heat wave still could do some serious damage. Oh, yeah, for sure. If it hits. Looks like it is it at does. least going to hit the P2. Okay. P two is just so bulky with that Eevee light. It is. Still, I don't see what Josh is going to do other than a switch out. And I could see if he brought the Pelipper, I would see a switch out straight away here. Yeah, I mean that that would certainly be an option. Turn off that sun that's just been set. Yeah. But, but then Clefki can just bring it back again next turn with priority. I mean, if he wanted to, yeah. But we're seeing that. Uh, Jake there going for the magic room. Yes. Now, do you know what magic room does? I believe it turns off items. Is that right? It does. Which yeah. is huge against Josh's team. Absolutely. We are seeing the Pelipper come out. That makes sense. He's not got anything big against his Arcanine, as far as I'm aware, though, on that P2. Well, no, but the Pelipper's now obviously a threat versus it, particularly in the rain. Yeah, but that, that Shadow Polygon Ball. is... Shadow Ball. How much will it do? Oh, not, not that much at all. So Porygon's lost the Eevee Light. I have to make, make you aware. Yeah, and you see that it's the Heat Wave is doing almost the same as it was with the sunny day, but now in the rain because it's yes. the Eevee Light no longer obviously bulking it up. Maybe not quite as much, but close to it. A protect makes sense with the damage the Pelipper's going to be trying to lay down. Yes, and a light screen is just going to start. A light screen on a sunny day is just going to nerf that Pelipper's damage straight back down. Yeah, absolutely. It's in the light screen, obviously, before going for the sunny day so that you can nerf it first of all with, and then the uh, sunny day goes up because obviously Porygon is still going to be laying out damage regardless of the rain and I just don't see a good answer from Josh's team to either of these Pokemon 
Yeah. The fact that you need to be switching the Pelipper in to set the rain makes it so so difficult to pull off. The Shadow Ball going into the Klefki there. Double into the Klefki. Yeah, Josh making a hard read. And that Skull did some serious damage to the Klefki. Yeah. The special defense drop really helping. Yeah. But I like this now from Jake. Another sunny day, it's going to stop that damage from being nearly as bad. And Icarus is just going to sit there and lay down some serious hurt. Yep. As soon as that sunny day goes up again, it's back off to the races, right? I was going to say, you, you need to bring that Pelipper out if you're Josh to get it back in. And yeah. there you go. There's the whack. But without a thick club. No, that's correct. So the, <laughs> the traditional uh, item from Marowak doing absolutely nothing here, obviously. I mean, it can still put out some hurt, but at the same time, it's not going to be the same. Another Shadow Ball. That Klefki's just about hanging on, but it, it's kind of done all it needs to at this point, right? Oh, and Porygon 2 survives. Yeah. So at this point, you, think... you can just afford to click Play Rough, right? Yeah. I think I think it's going down, though. I'd be very surprised if Klefki gets uh, left alone here. Yeah, with the sunny day up, uh, with the Marowak, even without its thick club, it can absolutely kill the Klefki, no question. Oh, the question I think is, it... oh, yeah. going for a switch. The back again. Back to Smart Pelipper. Play. Yeah. Yep. Really good read with the ground type move coming in for the Mar uh, to the Marowak as well. Oh this yeah. Is just nullify that completely as yep. Klefki gets taken down. Yeah. So no more sunny day. Rain's here to stay. So we said it's hard to see what Josh could do, but a couple of clever switches, and that's all it takes. Josh playing like he's prepped against this team, specifically. <laughs> Who'd have Always thought amazes it, right? me. Always amazes me. So seeing the Rella coming out here. I mean, you've always got to be weary of Rillaboom with a fake out and the priority pressure, no matter what Trick Room says. Yeah. The Heat Wave, I don't hate because you're hitting the Porygon too. It's probably going to take it down regardless. Yeah. And then fake out the Pelipper. I think that's yeah. the best. Smart play. Are we going to see a Protect from the Pelipper? I could imagine that. Now, there's, there's got to only be about one more turn left to Trick Room, right? It's got to be close. Yeah. And Jake's just been able to obviously whittle down the turns on that. He's lost the Klefki in the process, but he's still been able to put out some damage during it himself. So some, some good plays from both sides, obviously. Yeah, there's the Protect, reading the fake out. Yeah. And then P2 is going to get his last bit of... Oh, no. Oh, maybe we were out of Trick Room. We may well have missed that. Are. I did miss that. Yeah. Oregon 2 goes down. Magurna is going to come in in a nice, healthy spot, though. I can't yeah. imagine the Marowak coming in in the rain, to be perfectly honest. No, neither can I. I mean, there is the Rilla there, so there's an option for it. But in the rain, even still, it's uh, it's not in a great spot. Um, we do see that Magic Room ends. So when the Rilla does come... Sorry, when the Marowak does come back, it is going to have its big old thick club start yeah. bonking people with um <laughs> but now you're in the rain what are you going for here i can imagine the trick room's coming out i'd be very surprised if it doesn't oh high horsepower reasonable damage i mean it's That's not quite 50 percent but Ooh, it's the hurricane decent. Ooh, hurricane oh, did not do as much as i expect no, I agree. I would have thought there'd have been a lot, lot more coming out from yeah. it. But here we go. Trick Room once again. Magurna's getting healthier by the turn. Yeah. And Leftovers is that? It's getting yeah. healthier by the turn. Leftovers and Grassy Terrain. That Magurna is going to be an absolute beast to try and take down. Yeah. We saw it took the high horsepower pretty well. 
And the light screen's gone. Yeah. So, Jake getting into a bit of a tricky spot. I mean, he's still got the slow bro, and yeah, I don't hate the switch to that. Yeah. Because slow bro is going to be key, I think, for all of the Pokemon that Josh still has left on his side of the field. A grassy Glide not really doing too much. Well, I mean, it's a... still Stab. It'll be neutral versus the Pelipper. That I think looking dangerous, more dangerous by the second. Potentially, but I don't hate the play of just trying to take down the Magurna here because that's the one which you know can just run away with the game if you give it the chance. Yes. So Shadow Ball going Oof. into the Rilla. Thankfully, up as well. This could die to a Hurricane if it's the right Hurricane. Yeah. I think we're getting close to it now. Yeah, Ooh. down goes Rilla. So, and, then this and there's the soul heart. That's what you don't want to see if you're Jake. And then that double heal again. McGurna just getting yeah. right back up there. No, absolutely. And I think at this point, I'm not saying it's over, but if I'm Jake, I'm starting to think, how am I going to adjust for game two at already? Yes. You have to. Yeah. Now, I think if you're Jake, you need to read the Pelper coming out because Rain's going to reset. Yeah. So don't hate the muddy water there. No, in the rain, then... it'll still do a lot of damage. Yeah. And a scorching scans on uh, sands is going to do some gonna lay some damage down. Oh, but he goes oh. dragon pulse. Yeah, and to be fair, like I don't hate that. If you can do anything to get rid of the Pelipper, great. The problem is that I think people can forget that Pelipper is actually surprisingly bulky. Yes. You know, it's a tailwind setter and all that, but it doesn't oh. have the speed. Oh. Oh. The miss. And here's the a shadow ball. Miss. Wow. Shadow so much damage. Yeah, it did. And what is normally an absolute behemoth has now <sighs> just been taken off the field. Wow. And now Magurna, you're staring down Magurna in the rain with plus two. Yeah. What are you going to do? Like, I mean, realistically, this Dragon Pulse doing, getting it down to below half, but I think it had already had a bit on it, so I don't even think another one would kill right now. Yeah, and then there we go, the double heal. McGurn yeah, almost again. full health again. Like, he's never even touched it. No. Never had to click Fleur Cannon or anything like that, so it's still got the, what at this point, double soul heart. You just double into the Arcanine and, and job done. And the thing is, Jake can't even really afford sitting there not doing anything because, obviously, the uh, McGurn is still healing up. Yeah, so I think he's predicting a switch out with the Pelipper here, which I don't hear. No, because, I mean, realistically, you know you can't kill it as is. You know you're going down this turn, so you may as well just go for a last ditch. Hey, what, you, you trying to save your Pelipper? Well, I'm going to try and take out your Marowak without you noticing. Yeah, and he but doesn't switch it. No switch. And that Shadow Ball doing big damage. This skull will definitely be enough to pick yeah. up the KO. And that oh, goes to Josh. 3-0 in the first game. Very oh, well damn. played. Josh, unbelievable players there to stall out or to work around that prankster sunny day. Yeah, completely. It was uh, really well done. Uh, he, he knows what he's doing. I've seen Josh stall out things in the past, but the clever switches with the Pelipper, you know, getting the trick room up twice and just just predicting pretty much every move that Jake was trying to make there. Yeah. So I think Loki has to come. I mean, the thing is, whatever it's doing, there has to be some switches. You're seeing Bruce coming out, obviously, great in trick room. The question is, yeah, is there anything... The edge set. Taunt would do it. It would certainly help, yeah. 
but you need to actually have the chance to get it off. Yeah. And when you're staring down a P2 and a Magurna, which you don't even know the full sets of both, so there's uh, every chance that both of them have got Trick Room, right? In fact, did we yeah. see both of them set it up separately? We did. Yes, we did. Yeah. So you know that both of them are going. There's Magurna's no way there. you can, there's no way you can stop both. No. And even but if you Josh stop both on the foot, sorry. Josh will not be clicking both at the same time because that would be hilarious. Oh, Josh bringing the jolty on here. Uh, yes. To note. Yeah, that that is a big thing to note. Uh, What's he swapped so out for it? Ogre P is the... not there. Yeah. Clearly think so. I, if I'm Jake, I'm leading the Loki, yep. And then Icarus. Hmm. So, Loki, Bruce lead. I don't hate this at all, to be honest with you. I might be tempted to lead Loki, Icarus. Yeah. Oh, no. Oh. Sullivan, Sullivan, yeah, no, anything that's going to damage the Magurna. Yeah. And just and, throw damage. And to be fair, it's got Fake Out as well on the Rilla, so yeah. you can use that to try and stop one of the Trick Rooms as an option. Yeah. I mean, you're going to see a double Protect first turn. Mm hmm Not bringing the Slowbro, which is strange when you think about the potential for Trick Room, but at the same time, you saw it just go down so easily yeah, in that one... last game. Yeah, the thing is, it was a plus two Shadow Ball. Uh, it was only plus one at the time, and it didn't quite kill. I, th I think mm. the, the kill on Slowbro is what got it to plus two. But yeah, even still, enough. it's still a dangerous amount of damage. So we've seen Jake adjusting here. How has Josh adjusted, obviously? Are we going to see that Jolty on coming? Is he going to go full weather? Obviously no Kingra, but still. We're going to P2 again. If it ain't broke. Yeah, it's a great lead. It's really hard to try and counter this. If he wants to go Trick Room, he almost certainly has it. I like this lead from Jake, though. Just pure damage. Yeah. Yeah, like, completely. If anything wants to set Trick Room, you're going to take some hurt. Yeah, and to be fair, that's probably a better move, I think, than going for the Fake Out, quite frankly. Because the Fake Out is it's a 50-50 chance whether you hit the right one. And... Yeah. Even then, uh, you know, you're only stalling it for one turn. Both these mons yeah. are bulky enough. They'll they'll manage to get it up next turn, even if you don't let them this turn, right? Oh, yeah. So I think the double protect is coming out from Josh. I've seen him play enough times to know that's his go-to fake out. And it, it's a great option. You know, I think if you're going up against somebody that does that sort of thing. Try bringing a setup move on something so that you can threaten a yes. fake out and get some setup somewhere else. You know, take advantage of that. I've been keeping note, don't you worry. <laughs> Jacob, it's stuck for what he does here. Yeah, he really isn't sure about which way to go. No. Oh. The knockoff onto the P2, it's a smart play. It's with Drew. Oh, is this, is this going to be the... No. So we see the Pelop coming out, so we'll see what item it is with this knockoff. Yeah. A hot predict on a focus sash? No, that'd be totally. Yeah. It's unlikely. Oh, the close combat on the Magurna. Ooh. Big damage. Big, big damage. Big damage. Now, is the Magurna even going to go with Trick Room? Damn, Damn rock. rock. So and he's setting that room. rain up to stay. Yeah. There's a trick room, yeah. But yet again, we're seeing that grassy terrain with the life orb just healing this Magurna. If the Magurna yeah. goes for a protect, it's going to survive almost anything being thrown out. Um, yeah, I'm... Loki here is not, not in the worst situation. I oh, know it kind of is. It's going to get hit by something and it's minus defenses. So. It's, yeah, if it gets hit by a hurricane, which is the likely the move. Oh, hurricane, yeah, hell yeah. I was going to say that, scold, but yeah. Sc I mean, scold would do a lot. It's in the rain, obviously, as well. Yeah. So, realistically, it's Josh's choice. Yeah, I like the switch out because that's going to resist Yeah, at least one of them. And I think he has to go for the high horsepower. Hope he can actually pick yeah. up the KO like right off the bat. But I have to be uh, predicting that Josh is going to be going for uh, protect here. 
with that double heal on the Magurna? Yes. I would, I would assume so. So they the see room that service. room service popping. Bruce already for Trick no Room. Protect. No nope. D gleam, no flare cannon then, no? Uh no, I believe we've seen all the moves and there is no D gleam. Yeah. yeah. Hurricane coming out into Bruce as predicted. So great switch there. No confusions off any of these hurricanes. Pretty no. uh pretty good. But Josh didn't need to get that protect, he's got the, the healing anyway. And going for the flash cannon into Magurna. This will do a lot of damage. I don't know if it will pick up the KO, though. Um, a knockoff into Pelipper would be a big play. Well, it's already... Or even a knockoff into Magurna. <sighs> yeah, it's difficult because you've already knocked the item off of Pelipper. So you know that knockoff yeah. is going to do less damage than the first time around, right? But the high horsepower isn't working. We've just seen the Grassy Glide. I think the Grassy Glide may be close to enough to actually take it down, but not... Yeah. Not going for it, reading the protect, so that's smart from Jake. Okay, this is good from this is a good turn from Jake. This McGurn is going down. Oh crit. the crit. I think that crit definitely mattered. Possibly did. I mean it so depends on power, how power powerful power. Bruce is, but yeah, high horsepower I mean, going is, to do nothing, but Bruce is kinda of powerful. Yeah, it is. It you know, it's the split between bulk versus power and all that, right? Yeah. It's certainly no speed investment. So now Marowak in the rain is not the uh, not the most natural environment of a fire type Marowak. No, it's not, and it's not going to love a high horsepower from the Rillaboom either. The question is, how much damage can the Pelipper and Marowak get down before a high horsepower comes out? But Jake looking at switches anyway. Look how healthy these Pokemon are, Jake's as well. Yeah. The knockoff would be huge if he got it off. Agreed. In fact, yeah, knockoff probably better than the high horsepower, quite yeah. frankly. So you got to think Pelipper and Marowak going into Sullivan would be the one you'd look at, but Bruce is going to underspeed them both. Yeah. And so Pel I, can, I don't see Pelipper sticking around here. No, no. I, I reckon we're probably going to see a switch, maybe, from yeah. the Pelipper. Save it so you can reset rain later if you need to, or something along those lines. Would you want to? Put the Marowak on the field? It's it's hard to say. You well, do see you a go. switch, yeah. P2. Uh, we know this thing can take an absolute beating, so I don't think this try attack is going to do quite enough to it. But if we see a freeze para burn. Oh, that would be huge. Oh. Bone Meringue. Bone Meringue. Oh, doesn't even need the second hit. Oh. That is huge. That's four times damage for you, boy. Yeah, absolutely. Off, though, massive damage. and that Big, big damage. Is gone. Yeah. No, that, that's a great play from the, the knockoff, but at the same time, losing Bruce is going to hurt Jake here. Yeah. He and still has his other mons, but... Would a high horsepower have just killed... Uh, Again, it's four times, isn't it? No, it isn't. No, so it's it's only double, and I believe the knockoff, while there's still an item yeah. there, is actually more powerful than the high horsepower. Yeah, I agree. All right, trick room one turn left. You've got to think, stall this turn out with Loki. Yep. I think a grassy glide's not the worst thing in the world. No, I agree. Grassy glide's gonna. Okay. <clears throat> Still do reasonable damage. I like the Sucker Punch, though. Yeah. Although, Porygon 2 could throw a Shadow Ball out if it wanted. True. Yeah, that that is a good point. Not going to outspeed the Sucker Punch, but if we see a Protect. We Which go. we do. Yeah. Well read from Josh. Sucker Punch doing yeah. nothing there. Ice oh, Beam. Nice. Looking to take down this Rilla. Yeah. Obviously recognizing it as a threat. And the Eviolite has disappeared. Yeah. 
So Porygon can actually start taking some proper damage now. And so if it manages to get rid of this Porygon next turn, that's his trick room disappeared. Yeah, it's but I mean, at this point, it. do you desperately need the trick room? I mean, it's still better for you if you Josh, but are you wasting time to reset it? That's the question, mm. because you've got to start being thinking about taking at least one more of these Pokemon out of the field. Oh, ally switch. What Everybody move. hates to see it. What a move. Close combat does nothing into the Marowak. Knock off going really back it. into the Porygon, doing almost mm -hmm. nothing as well. Oh, and we nice. see a... Oh, but the avoid. Oh, if that would have hit, that would have been such a good play. I mean, it was such a good play from Josh, and he's got to be absolutely livid with that miss. He will not be happy. No. A moment of silence, I think, for Josh here. But the problem is, right, if you're Jake, do you just think, is he going to do it again? Yes, this is in, he's in your head now. Yeah, ally switch is the most infuriating move you can possibly see. Nine times out of ten, it will only be clicked once. But <laughs> on that one time out of ten where it's clicked twice in a row, you will feel like an absolute idiot. Yeah. Hey, we've just seen a 10% miss with Poltergeist. Anything exactly. can happen. Yeah, this is it, right? Oh. That part of guys, I'm not sure if it would have killed or not, but it would have hurt. Yeah, absolutely. Well, it was going into Loki. It definitely would have. It would have been yeah. super effective. Even without the Thick Club, I think it would have still done massive damage. All well, that Intimidates now. Uh, yeah. Just little in the Marak. Okay, switch uh, out anyway. Yeah, good, good switch, I think. Yeah. And the high the horsepower. High doesn't affect so great and yeah he he found the time to do it so well played from josh for that josh is playing insane it literally it's like josh's one move what knowing exactly what jake's gonna press before jake even presses yeah it. it's yeah completely and you know even if jake can somehow manage to pull it back because i definitely think he's behind it's hard to say he's behind when he's winning on health, but it, it's just, what do you do from this position, right? I still and... think Jake's in a better spot overall because the damage output is significantly less. I think that Personally, Trick Room changes things. I do. I would, I would be taking Icarus straight back out again if I was Jake. But on the same hand, I think Pelipper's not sticking around for long, so... It's a toughie. It's a toughie. See, P2, even without the Eevee Light, is still very bulky. Yep. Just I click like that move, with like a second to go. Yeah. That's the protects. Stopping anything from hurting. Oh, but he goes into the. What are the boomies? Are the going to survive? It is. Yeah, it is. Oh, oh freeze! Oh, my word. Oh, and then it's going to get picked up. Yeah. Oh. My day. Wow. Wow. Oh, my days. <laughs> like, I, I'm not sure, because I think the Pelipper in the Trick Room would have gone first anyway, so I don't know whether it mattered, but it, I, I lost track of things there. I was, you know, reeling from it too much. Yeah. Um, it... <sighs> but it's still massive. Okay, so now I like Josh's position a bit more. Yeah. But I also now... think that we're going to see a switch out with the Pelipper. Do you switch out, though? You're the fastest thing going. Yes. And you've got a stab super effective against Dark Knight. Obviously, he goes for the switch, as we can see here. Yeah. Marowak comes out. You don't want to risk that hurricane missing. Not in the rain. Yeah. Well, it would have been a scold or something into the Archive, surely. But And then that is going to hurt. Yeah. It's going to be a two-hit KO. Heat wave. Oh. Marowak will take this fine. Yeah. It didn't enjoy it, and neither did the Porygon, but they're both still alive. You've still got at least another turn of Trick Room left. Yeah. you got to get Sucker Punch is the one, isn't it, right? Sucker Punch is... Oh, the, the ally switch is in Jake's head. 
<laughs> Two more and turns of Trick Room, you can see there. Yeah. Like, you can't stall that, right, at this point, because you're so, you're so close to being taken down, you just need to be able to make reads. Yeah. So, Boomerang coming out straight into the Arcanine. Yeah. How much this oh, it's now? not quite going to kill, though. No. Arcanine being a bulky boy. Yeah. And what's this going to... It's got like Scorching that. Sands. This will probably... Oh, will it pick up the KO on P2? No. It doesn't. But it burns. It burns, but this isn't going to drop its special attack. And no. at this point in time... Josh is still going in. first, short of the Sucker Punch. So, so Sucker Punch or Spectral... Th oh, no, Spectral Thief. Oh, I, thought, I thought it was... Um, no, it's not Shadow priority. Speed. So... So now I can see an ally switch happening here. Oh, no, he doesn't? He, he doesn't need to, because he can just do the Shadow Ball into the... Uh, yeah. Loki, uh, Marshadow, which will pick up the KO. And then Gold is going to finish off the air, can I, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, well, actually, no, because there's... Thinking about it, this is the last turn of Trick Room. So Heat Wave's going to pick up the KO on P2. Ooh. Which means that you... Basically, the Arcanine has to KO the Pelipper. And with the Dragon Pulse, it could, you know. Yeah. How low is this Pelipper? I can't remember. It's, it's low. pretty low. It's pretty low. Oh, what are we seeing here? So the drizzle comes out. With a scold hit, it will kill the Arcanine. There's no oh, question. Okay. Right? It's just so... a case. Can this Dragon Pulse kill the Pelipper? It goes first. I think it does, you know. What a game. It what does, a yeah. Finch. Fantastic. Wow. The back and forth there was amazing. Like, well played to both of them, but Very yeah. Very well played. Great on Jake to pull it back. Wow. What a game. Sets up for a very interesting game three, this. Yeah. Yeah. And basically, both of these players at this point, they're, it comes down to this game, they're playing for the bye in week one, right? Because pretty much the winner gets it, the loser doesn't, I believe. I think pr pretty much the winner guarantees it. Yeah. The loser gets a big question mark put over the head. Yes, agreed. But um, Jake doesn't want to... If Jake wins, he goes up 1-0, uh, and Josh only goes down 1-0, like on differential. Yeah. Right? Josh, on the other hand, currently sitting on a 3-0 three, three yes. lead, if Josh was to pick up the, the win here. Yeah. So we see no changes? Nope. Same teams brought from both. What do you do, though, if you're either player? Because win or lose that last game, like, it was so close. You can't be happy with the performance from either side, right? <sighs> it's just it's just tough. I don't know what you do. So it I looks think like... The Jake's team is just prepared to shut down Josh's on every single avenue with the magic room, the knockoffs. Yeah, oh, but I mean, that's... Magic Room isn't coming because that's on the Clef Key, right? He doesn't have the Slow Bro if Trick Room is set. Granted, he's got the Magnazone, which is great. Yes. No question, especially with that room's service. But the coverage that he gets, I think Josh, Josh's side of things, you have to try and keep the Magurna around longer. Yeah, that Magurna is a massive threat and he let it go too soon last time. Yeah. I agree. And I also think if Josh would have ally switched at the right time, that'd have been it. Oh god, yeah. Grand. And the problem is that ally switch is still now gonna be in Jake's head every yeah. time he clicks a move. Oh yeah. So fake out trick room? I mean that would be the normal play, but when you're facing down something that's super fast and something that's super slow in the Magna Zone, do you go for it? That's true. And a close combat is going to hit the P2 and it's not going to be able to be faked out. Looks like he's going for the key. Spectral Thief into the Hitman Chan instead. Oh, no, a Protect. Okay. Double going for protect. Double Protect. I don't think that was quite necessary. From... Especially when the fake out can't hit you. Yeah, if, if I'm... Does that... a Super Punch hit Loki, though? 
Um, it would. I don't even know whether Hitman Chan gets like a punch. Like he really should. It should get every punch. Uh, yeah. move, right. It should be the only move he gets. <laughs> um, the, I believe he may be worried about the Porygon too, though, because we know that that can two hit KO from the Shadow Ball, right? Yeah, but you've got to think you're going first, and of course, combat is going to just destroy it. Well, either way, he's getting a read on what's happening, and maybe he just doesn't mind if the Trick Room gets set up. Yeah, it's Dream Punch there. Okay, good scout and Trick Room. So, Magda's own going to be the fastest thing on the field for the next five turns. It is, yeah, but it's not going to love that Drain Punch if it ever connects. True. You just need to make sure that you take the Hitmonchan out first. Or, like Jake's doing, get a close combat off. Yeah, the close combat on the P2 will, will be huge, although I think with the Eviolite it'll still take a, it'll tank at least one. Oof, it's risky like that. And is he switching uh, Bruce switching out, out after the room service has popped in Trick Room? This is bizarre. I mean, Jake, he obviously has a plan, but plan. still. I don't know where he's going with this. He's switching in a much, much faster An Pokemon into Trick Room. Be... Ooh, I don't know if that's necessary. Hey, Jake's potentially going to be top of the league after this. You can't, you can't sack that. And then the, the rain coming in. Yeah, rain coming in, like, it's now got a, a close combat going into a Pelipper, which will take it really, really well. Drain Punch, it's still going to do a reasonable chunk of damage. Hurt. Yeah. The close combat still doing nearly half. Yeah, I'll be honest, it took that not oh. quite as well as I expected it to. Loki but, is still powerful. Yeah, a Protect or a Switch Out has to come out from Loki now. Going sucker for the punch, sucker fair punch. Enough. Fair enough. Yeah, a protect an arc and I, I don't hate it. Predicting a prediction from Josh and just going with what he wouldn't expect. Maybe that's Jake's game plan. <laughs> Josh yeah. has read every single turn a move ahead, so maybe Jake's just going nuts. And just you know doing... what? It, it may work. Yeah, just like really unexpected. Because I think so far that weirdly we've actually seen from these bizarre plays Quick are the sucker sweep. punch though. So this will do yeah. nothing. But then what's Pelipper going into? Hurricane. Oh, it goes straight into like, yeah. Oh. Joshy unexpected. <laughs> I, I like the crazy plays to keep him off, off beat, but... No, eventually you're gonna just take something like that to the face, right? Yeah. I wonder what Josh hasn't brought then. Is he is he brought the Magurna or the Marowak? I think Marowak's got to stay at the back, right? Yeah, I mean, what what are you keeping them? Oh, Marowak back this? for a grassy seed on the Hitmonchan. I mean, if you know you're going up a Rilla, against a Rillaboom, I don't hate it. Sticking it on something yeah. is is reasonable because to be fair that hitman channel will take a beating now from the rilla it will i don't know why he's not gone grassy but oh the quick guard he's not yeah again yeah it's thrown off kilter you know Just, yeah it, i think well, there we go the drain punch not the quick guard Gold. That's gonna hurt. Double into it, yeah. Icarus goes down. So we're now looking at two on two versus, sorry, two on four from Jake's side yeah. of things. High horsepower coming out. That grass is. Oh, oh that's a crit. That's that's got to be upsetting because, yeah, it's it's. You want a crit to be doing more than that. Because so I don't think a, a non-crit will kill from this range at that point. Grassy Seed proving its use. Yeah. And we see the I think Flash Cannon into Hitmonchan. I don't love that. Um, 
I mean, the Tram's dying after that, but it's just, does he does he drain punch the Magna Zone? Well, he's not going to get a chance. Oh, well, never mind. I... Uh, okay, so the Magna Zone outspeeding the Hitmonchan. Yeah, is it still Trick Room or is that over? Uh, it might still be Trick Room, yeah. This might be a, a turn or two left of it. Skull doing reasonable damage there to Bruce, and there's the end of Trick Room, yeah. Keep missing these Trick Room times. It's progging out again. So if I'm Jake, I don't hate a Discharge here. No, I mean... I mean or not really... having to pop them. Yeah. Yeah, that's the thing, right? You need the that gun. Like the discharge, yeah, yeah, it'll take down the Pelipper, it'll be reasonable yeah. damage, but not great on the Porygon, and the Rilla will take it quite well. So, Rillaboom's going to knock off the Eviolite first, so I think this is going to do some fairly decent damage to the Porygon after all. Because yeah. the discharge will hurt. What you have to be worried about, though, is that P2 getting the download on special uh, attack is is concerning. Always concerning. There goes the Eviolite. Here comes the Discharge, but the Protect from the Pelipper. So it's not picking up the KO there. I don't think it'll pick up any KO. Oh, to be fair, though, Rillaboom took that amazingly well. He can click yeah, that did. indiscriminately. But it Trick is, Room coming back out. We've lost the room service from Bruce now, so I don't even know whether he underspeeds necessarily. It underspeeds the Pelipper, but the Porygon... Yeah, don't know. Crassy Glide outspeeds everything in the world, though, so... Yep, God bless priority, right? Hell yeah. So, I like this turn from Jake. Jake could turn this around now. He could get two KOs if Josh was not careful. I mean, it's possible, but... Yeah, because the, the Discharge is going to go before the Pelipper. Are we going to see a switch out from it here? Josh has just seen the Discharge is kind of not dangerous to Jake himself. Could be switching in the Marowak if that's out the back. Yeah, it's Marowak on McGurn, isn't it? Yeah, and either of them takes in, it fine. Switching McGurn for Porygon would be big. There's the Pelipper goes out, and There's here's the Marowak. the Marowak. Yeah. No McGurn. Wow. I think he's seen that Jake was ready for it and well, able to take it. That is disgusting. Crit though. I so this is going to this is going to hurt crit, Jake, actually, because yeah. all this is going to do is damage Rillaboom more. Yeah, but it hurt. It, it's so little. Like he doesn't need to be no super lightning rod. About that. No lightning rod on the Marowak. Wow. Okay. That does surprise me. Because it's still, even though it's discharged, it should still be immune, right? Uh, it just doesn't yeah. stop it from hitting everyone else. Yeah. Yeah, it, it wouldn't draw in the the attack, but it would still be immune to the damage. So and now Josh is in a significantly worse spot than. Uh, yeah. You would have been. Trick room is up, but you've got Bruce on your side of the field if you Jake. So you you're still in a. Yeah. Like reasonable speed position. You've got Grassy Glide as well on I River. Think yeah, so Marowak's the only damage dealer on Josh's team, and I think it's going down to a Grassy Glide and another Discharge. I mean, if if I'm Jake, I'm taking out that Pelipper, right? Because you can guarantee one-shot it. Short of a Protect, it goes down to a Grassy Glide. <sighs> See, I'm Grassy Gliding the Marowak myself, and I'm Discharging. Okay. There's an argument for that. Yeah, okay, I could see where you're coming from. Now the Marowak has a chance to uh, really upset the Rillaboom. It is at least in the rain still. I guess you don't know if it's slower or not, do you? If you Jake. Yeah, so protect from Pelipper, so the Grassy Glide is going to go into nothing. So it's just a question of what's this Marowak done? Flare Flare Blitz into the into Rillaboom. The Rilla in the rain oh he still kills wow that thing is unreal yeah that yeah but i don't know why he didn't just discharge and grassy glide the marowak there oh, it, it's hard right 
Like, I mean, I think we're still going to see that ne next time. And but he's not Oko in this match, unless he gets a crit on the Marowak, which is his only out now. Yeah, two turns of Trick Room. You go for the Discharge. He's going for he's a double discharge. Protect? No, no, he can't. So we just know, is, is he slower than the Marowak? He is. So he is. Crit Marowak? No. Not quite, so he just needs to live this Flare Blitz. If he so does... I'm pretty sure this is Rockhead Marowak, oh, right? rank. We know this kills. Yeah. Never mind. Wow. And Josh gets one oh. Yeah. He does. Yeah. I mean, Jake bringing it back at least so instead of a 3 0, but yeah, GG to Josh. GG's to Josh. Could have gone either way at the end there. Yeah, it really could have. It was it was really well played, I think, from both coaches. I mean, you saw Jake bring it back massively after game one. Um, yeah. You saw Josh make reads at every single turn versus Just Jake. Out of his blooming mind. <laughs> yeah, he, they, I mean, to be fair, they clearly both knew what the other one was planning, but I think Josh definitely just had a slight edge on those reads. And, and that yeah. ultimately, I think, is what it came down to. Yeah. Um, Jake has always been the king of prep, having unreal strats and an unreal team. But yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but, you know, home. as much as we say that prep is key, and it absolutely is sometimes, you know, you, you can't prep for what happens on the actual day. True. Um, but this means that guaranteed, Josh has now got a buy for playoffs, short of some very weird shenanigans in the, the rest of the games. Uh, Jake I don't think so. <laughs> is... Jake's going to be, like, teetering on the edge. There's a chance he could still get it, but it's unlikely, yeah. I think, from this point. But uh, regardless, look, guys, thank you very much for watching. Join us again. We've got playoffs starting very, very soon, which is going to be some real, real good games. Still got a couple more week sevens, I think, uh, to finish it off. But, yeah, you all take care now. Bye-bye. Peace out.